Okay, we are live once again on a beautiful sunny Sunday afternoon here in Portugal with our Linda School Throwback Series. And um, this throwback series is with ex Linda School students. We have been doing this for over a month now, actually two months really. And today we have the pleasure of having Ricardo Ferreira on our show. So, Ricardo, hello, welcome, and thank you so much for accepting this invitation. Hello, thank you for having me. Let's just do something great today. Yes, I'm sure about that. <laughs> and I'm really excited to, you know, to have a YouTuber Ooh. on our on our interview. Aspiring series. YouTuber, perhaps. And, okay, whatever, okay. whatever. There is that is the path. That's the way you go. We have to start somewhere. And you know what's funny about that? Funny, not in the humoristic sense, funny in that, wow, it's even amazing, is that you, Ricardo, you were my student at Linda School. And um, at the time, as far as I can remember, you were, you know, quite uh, kept to yourself and uh, very quiet, um, mm -hmm. always very you did participate when when asked and all of that yeah. but you tended to keep to yourself more so um mm -hmm. you know now going public like even making youtube videos and about personal development wow that is a big huge i can imagine how huge that step is like from that budding teenager who wasn't sort of too sure of speaking out to now, yeah, I'm totally capable and I do have a lot to share with the world. Congratulations, Ricardo. <laughs> I am so happy and proud, really, to see um, your blooming. What, what would you like? like? Could you please introduce yourself a little bit before like before going on with, you know, mm -hmm. what would you like to share about this okay, sure. sort of blooming? Mm -hmm. um, I guess we'd start like with the end of secondary school. So this was about summer 2017, so around three years ago. And then at that point, I, I actually decided I wasn't going to study in Portugal, but I was actually going to try to apply to to England, to universities in England. And so what I decided to do then was to actually do a gap year since mm. it was already too late for the applications. And since I also want to apply to Cambridge University mm -hmm. and Cambridge University, the applications must be done by October of the year before. Oh. And uh, that's why I decided to actually do a gap year so that um, um, I could uh, sort of, uh, because at that time I just had absolutely no organization skills. And so I just realized that I wasn't disciplined enough. So if I want to actually study abroad and basically do everything myself and be totally independent, then I would actually need to, I'd actually need to be, become an organized person, let's say. Okay. And, um, and also I just wanted to try some projects out. So for example, some support classes of mathematics at my former secondary school. You, and, were teaching, uh, you were teaching other other students. Uh, yeah, exactly. Okay. So year 10, year 11, and year 12. Mm -hmm. And uh, so after the gap year finished, um, actually, by January, I got rejected from Cambridge. Mm -hmm. And so that was sort of the turning point. And oh. uh, 
And then what happened was that I actually just quit all the games that I was playing. And uh, I ended up just focusing on my studies. And what happened was that um, in, um, in June, it was my exams. And luckily, I managed to get in like by one point. Whoa. So th those exams were actually entrance exams that I had to do. And so that was another reason to actually have the gap year so that I could actually prepare myself mathematically mm -hmm. for the exams. Because the thing was that the syllabus in Portugal and England is a bit different. So there were some things that were coming out in the exam that I actually had never learned before. Oh, okay. So I sort of had to do some self-study myself so mm -hmm. that I could actually learn what was required for the exam. Well, and then I got into Warwick University and uh, I've been there two years now and I'm going into my third year now. Mm. Okay, so you had to face... Um, First of all, the the gap year experience uh, was a little bit different, maybe from the rest of your uh, school colleagues. For sure, for sure. And then again, rejection. Mm -hmm. um, that is uh, also a big challenge. Usually, like we have this goal, and we think, okay, this is exactly what I want. This is what I'm gonna do. And then when the time comes, a no comes, and then we're like oh boy, now what, right? <laughs> um, how did that become the turning point, as you said? Um, I, I suppose, well, when something goes wrong, generally what happens is that you first try to look for excuses that are outside of yourself. So <laughs> the... Um, the, the first excuses that come to mind are, for example, well, I actually, for example, didn't have a, an, an education in a private school or I didn't have, I didn't study the same syllabus as the, the English students do. And so that was also disadvantage. Or, for example, during my ch childhood, no one ever helped me with um, anything or incentivized me to do better or anything. And so the, the, these are all the, always the, the first things that come to mind, the sort mm -hmm. of excuses trying to find, find the blame in everyone except yourself. Hmm. But the problem that you realize with that is that if all, all the blame was with everyone else and not yourself, then that means that you really didn't have any control over the situation, which means that from the start, you were already just condemned, let's say, to Right, to so fail. you are removing the power that you could have exactly. if you took responsibility. Exactly. And so if, uh, if wh when the blame is everyone else's, then what happens is that uh, you 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 essentially have no power yeah so the the better alternative is actually that you focus not on what you can't control mm -hmm. because if that's the reason why you fail then there's nothing you can do about it mm -hmm. so the best thing to do is just to focus on what you indeed can control mm -hmm responsibility for your own actions and think about them then you can actually figure out oh this time i i did some i did this thing wrongly mm -hmm. and so this was the mistake how can i do better in the future so that i do not have to go through the same pain and mm -hmm. the same deception and the same so what uh, did you find out were the real reasons well i i think the um, I think the key point was the, the interview stage. Mm -hmm. So like at Cambridge University, especially in maths, what they do is, so first you have to go there in person. And uh, then what, what they do is basically they, 
it's not like what you'd expect from an interview, asking normal questions. Who are you? What are your goals and whatnot? It's not really that. It's extremely academic. So mm-hmm. generally what they are looking for is just, are you actually capable to survive this extremely demanding course? Mm. And so what they'll do essentially is they will, we'll have two sessions of 30 minutes each. Mm-hmm. And basically we are just doing maths exercises. So they, for example, say, so here's a certain exercise, here's what's happening. And uh, this is my question. And mm-hmm. now answer and talk about your thought process so that we can understand it as well. Whoa. So and how so, was that challenging to you? And so what I realized at that point is that I underestimated the level of preparation that you actually needed to mm. do that. Okay. So you essentially had to prepare for that interview almost as if you were preparing for a final exam. Okay. And, uh, and so that was where the, I think the disparity happens. Mm-hmm. And, so, and so that's where the solution came as well, because it was just, well, I didn't focus enough. I underestimated the challenge and worked actually much less than was necessary. Mm-hmm. So next time, what are we going to do? Well, we are not going to underestimate the challenge anymore because mm-hmm. we already missed one opportunity. So we don't want to miss the next one as well. Mm-hmm. So let's do the best we can so that we can take advantage of this opportunity and let's see what happens. So that's the time when you decided to let go of gaming. Correct. Yeah. Mm, okay. So you were quite sort of into into gaming. You you enjoyed playing like throughout your day. Yeah. Yeah. For for most of the time, that 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 was exactly what happened. Especially especially during secondary school, I think years ten, eleven, and twelve. And so people usually might say and might think that because my uh, school grades were actually so great that yeah. I had some amazing organization and like studied every day and whatnot. <laughs> but what you come to realize is that I did not succeed because of my great organization. I succeeded despite my yeah. lack so of organization. Let's maybe say. 10th, 11th, 12th grade were a little bit too not challenging enough for you. So you sort of entertained yourself with other stuff while you were doing 10th, 11th, 12th grade. And it was easy for you because it was a skill you had, natural skill, basically. Yeah, I, I would say that natural skill really, really made the difference there hmm. because... Hmm. Because at the time, I didn't really take care of anything related to lifestyle, neither sleep, nor exercise, nor mm-hmm. diet, nor... Nothing. Yeah. Nor <laughs> studying really. a lot or anything, really. Yeah, but afterwards, what, what I've come to realize is that um, if I actually add slept well and adopted better lifestyle choices at the time, then I could have actually made my life much easier at that point. Yeah. Because what I've come to realize is that every single of those bits, both sleep, diet, and exercise, I think those are really the main three. Mm -hmm. They really affect your performance like everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so if you master those, then every other time when you are not doing those the quality of that time just increases immensely mm, okay. and so basically if you get those three right then your the rest of your life would become much easier and so that, that's a, really what i realized i've got a question here which is yep. uh, i still have questions about linda school but now this question comes up which is you know, you, you were quite proficient at gaming, so I'm sure that that it gave you skills. Now, when you stopped, yeah. Yeah. what skills did you become aware of that you had gained from all of that practice? Hmm. Let's see, let's see. Um, 
I mean, m m most of the games that I played were actually strategy games. Mm -hmm. So at, at the time when uh, one of the games that I liked playing the most was actually Magic the Gathering. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a, a trading card game, but at the time it was already available online. Okay. And, um, and so I think that was particularly good because um, what it allowed me to do was basically the thing about that strategy game is that in a sense you could could draw a bit of a parallel with life, which yeah, is yeah, that's where I'm reaching at. Yeah, yeah. What so you basically start with a deck of cards. the The only thing that you control really is the deck of cards. You don't control which cards you draw when, and so you really can't complain about the cards that you draw. You just build the deck. <laughs> and the cards you accept the cards the card. that that you draw and, and then as the game progresses what happens is that you gain quite a lot of concepts about like how to strategize because a, at each a, and every step it's almost like chess there are a lot of possibilities mm -hmm. but you need to have a sort of game plan to have an idea of how you are going to play, if you are going to play more aggressively, trying to win the game fast, or if you are actually able to drain out your opponent and out-resource them. And so if you can drag the game longer, that might be a strategy. So I think the thing that it helped me the most really was just in this sort of strategizing my game plan going forward. Mm, I mean... And do you think it also, in a sense, in a strange sense, but in a sense, it was also helping you with your success, that the success that you had from 10th to 12th grade, though not directly, but in a parallel way? Actually, I, I do have a theory that okay. that is very likely the case. Mm. What is the theory? <laughs> Well, I, it's actually a theory with no explanation, Sally. Okay, right. So you have this feeling, this intuition that, yeah, that though yeah. you, that it's not something you can explain or understand, somehow mm -hmm. the skills you were developing by doing the, by playing that game mm -hmm. were also helping you be successful at your exactly. other uh, activities. Yeah, yeah. It, it does make a lot of sense to me. So that's why I asked the question in the first place. Mm -hmm. Because there are things that we can't really understand. And our brain, it also works in ways that are hard to sort of put your finger on. But yeah. the brain then is a unit. And if something is working well in a sphere of... of um, um, knowledge and so on that will influence all other spheres of knowledge that are similar and therefore that will improve all other spheres of knowledge even though you're not practicing them it's like uh, for instance doing yoga you become stronger not because you're doing push-ups but because you're doing exercises that will develop the muscles in a specific way and then you realize oh i can do more push-ups when you go and do push-ups so it's um it's a, a little bit like that that you, you're not doing the thing itself but then it helps the other thing um yeah, exactly. about linda school at that time you were a linda school student so you had to do homework and all of that stuff as you know mm -hmm. and so my question is um usually uh, how was being um a linda school student um helpful of course as well as with your english skills um helpful for your own um, development as a person mm -hmm. um i mean if i had to just pick one skill i i would say it's definitely writing mm -hmm. because um because firstly, um, at, at the age that I started learning actually how to write, it really introduced to me the concept of structure in writing. Mm -hmm. So it needs to have an introduction, a mid part, and then a conclusion, and it all needs to follow logically. And I think it was really my experience at Linda School that 
sort of set the foundation for mm -hmm. all the writing skills that went from then on. When, and, when did you come to our school? How old were you? Do you remember? Um, it was in year four. Okay, so, fourth grade. And then from then on? So this would be 11 years, I guess, 11 years ago. Yeah, long time ago, eh? <laughs> a bit, a bit. <laughs> yeah, I do find many times that um, at school, um, people don't really get taught how to summarize, how to structure mm -hmm. their, their, their thoughts. I think that's crucial. So, and because, because we do teach that, I do find mm -hmm. there is a parallel and that people can gain a lot from what they learn at our school. Right, because the thing is that, actually, personally, I found that writing is extremely helpful to, it really helps you think. Mm -hmm. So, for example, one of the, um, one of the habits that I gained during, especially during my time at uh, Warwick University in England was actually just journaling. So at the end of the day, just writing down all your worries so that you could actually sleep well and mm -hmm. then planning the day afterward. And that was actually great because when the, the next day came, then I, I would just go almost like a robot and just following all the steps one by one. And it, it is much better to have a plan the day before than to think everything on the spot. Because sometimes when you plan ahead, you might be able to predict some things into, into the future that you can't quite predict if you are just looking at the situation right in front of you. And... Uh, and then it sort of also builds you some momentum. So if you have to, for example, do an action, then stop to think about what to do next, then do the other action, then stop to think about what to do next, you end up spending a lot of time there in mm -hmm. doing that. And so during my stay at, at Warwick University, Basically, I had to take advantage of every single second because I absolutely require every single second. And mm -hmm. so planning the next day allowed not only to build that momentum, but like save the time between uh, those be to just to avoid uh, having to make that decision like every time um, along the day. Then you just batch it all at the end of the day and in the next day, great. Mm -hmm. And in what way has knowing good English served you? Well, actually, I think that's the, that's the one thing that I'm the most grateful to my parents for doing is actually like allowing me to learn English at such an high level. Mm -hmm. Because funnily enough, like even in writing or in thinking and whatnot, that's the la th that's my default language right now. Mm -hmm. I guess the only exception is dreams. I found that dreams I still use mostly Portuguese. Oh, yeah. um, and, uh, and the other thing as well is that um, English was very important because it was... Jean Gregorio really put it best. It's like English is the language of the internet. And mm. it, it was really what inspired me in the first place yeah. and then allowed me to like, for example, my process throughout these three years have always been. So I have some problem. Uh, well, this is a problem. We have to fix it somehow. How do we do it? Mm -hmm. Well, let's search online for some inspiration. Let's see what the internet says and let's come together come up together with a solution and i suppose it, it was from all this learning that uh, then inspired my my own youtube channel because right. it was sort of the realization that well in english there's a lot of things available but in portuguese actually there are still very few Mm -hmm. And so what if I can cater to those people who don't yet know English, who don't yet have access to that power and that information? What if I try to summarize myself and translate it, let's say, to Portuguese and 
just share it with everyone what would happen brilliant wow that was a great does your channel have a name or is it your own name correct it is exactly the name that you see below here it's ricardo freire okay okay so people can find your channel by searching ricardo freire uh, if you search Ricardo Ferreira, you'll likely find find it. It will probably be like third, fourth, or fifth. Great. Or I suppose you could also search for Ricardo Ferreira Matematica. Ah, that okay. also works if, if you because can find you it. Because you have created a load of videos to help uh, 10th, 11th, 12th graders, right? To yes, sort that's of correct. To summarize. Um, yeah, so the motivation of that was that I actually realized that the the way I saw mathematics and the way that I explained mathematics, some of my explanations were uh, a lot better and a lot of, a lot clearer to a lot of my colleagues than mm -hmm. um, even what some teachers could provide, let's say. Yeah. And so this, this was sort of a thing that I had to tick off my checklist, let's say, because it was just something that I had to get out of my mind so that I could actually like, I, I know that I have this knowledge, I have these I great explanations it. that I can share and that I bet that a lot of people can actually benefit from there yeah. because they're, they are actually so different from mm -hmm. the usual way, way how we think how we yeah. teach things mm -hmm. and so that that helps quite a lot yeah. and uh, it's funny because when i was doing my support classes back in um 12th like, grade yeah. like after 12th grade yeah during my gap year mm -hmm. what what happened was that i actually had um one, one girl which was um, in one of the support classes in year 12 and she actually said that I I helped her uh, regain the joy for mathematics let's wow. say wow and that is I suppose such a that joy. was just because of um, the informal way in mm -hmm. which I teach things and just don't try to be too formal Mm -hmm. And I think another advantage as well is just my age. Yeah. Because, because w w when there's that age gap, it's, I, I feel there's always some sort of miscommunication mm -hmm. unless like the people know each other very well. Yeah. So when it's sort of the same generation, it's almost as if people are talking the same language more. Yeah. Yeah. And so I feel that's also a factor that helps quite a lot yeah and so i mean really if if anyone i mean originally it was intended to help prepare people for the year 12 exam this year mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i mean the the content is still the same for the next years so for yeah. example if uh, if uh, you want if you for example are doing the second wave of exams for year 12 next week Mm -hmm. then uh, I think it's one of the best ways to prepare. And uh, also, for example, if you are going to your, uh, if you are going to start your 10, 11 or 12 mm -hmm. uh, next year and you need to revise something or even learn the new material before you, you actually see it or even mm -hmm. while you are seeing it, if you want a different perspective, then I think that's, that that's great basically the goal was just to have a set of 11 videos which bas which basically contains all the necessary content from mathematics years 10 11 and 12 mm -hmm. so that for example you could just sit down in one afternoon and just revise for the exam all the content easily chill and wow and that was basically the goal because I wanted to provide the best experience for mm -hmm. whoever was trying to study because mm -hmm. I imagine myself trying to revise for an exam and it's like, it's so many content. Where, yeah. where do I start? I don't yeah. remember all of these things. Yeah. So how am I going to do this? And now you have the, and, and the problem was what was the competition doing? The, what mm -hmm. the competition was doing 
was it was a lot of scattered videos. So it mm -hmm. was just how to do this one specific thing and how to do that other one specific thing. But the problem is sometimes you don't actually know what your own question is. So <laughs> sometimes sometimes you just need to look at the whole thing and actually and that and then you actually discover what the actual what question, is question yeah because is. sometimes you don't really and, know what is you don't you understand right yeah exactly and and so that was basically the goal is this is the most complete um set of videos that you are ever going to get about mathematics for years 10 11 and 12 and uh, it if you need to prepare for them, they are, they are probably the easiest, most comfortable, and uh, requiring less effort way that you actually need that to do That is it. really precious, really precious, what you've created, Ricardo. And I'm so glad that you are now at a point in your life where you are confident that you can share that and uh, mm -hmm. that it's sort of because uh, your being the same age gives it another context yeah. and, and makes it, as you said, much easier. Now, I have a surprise for you. And um, yeah, uh, so our <laughs> interview is this usual half an hour. And okay. um, but I still have stuff I'd like to talk to you about. And Perfect. so I want to make an invitation. Ooh. And my invitation is would you be available for next Sunday again? <laughs> oh, no, that's a great surprise. Yeah, it is a surprise. I'm telling everyone, Ricardo did not know about this. It's the first time he's <laughs> hearing about this. <laughs> that, that, that's better than, uh, than receiving a present for birthday. <laughs> So instead of me asking you my usual question, which is what would you recommend uh, for children and youngsters out there uh, if they want to achieve their dreams? I'm not going to ask that if okay. you can, if you can be on next Sunday and mm -hmm. we will take the conversation from there. What do you think, oh. Ricardo? Oh, I think that's a great idea. I mean, I actually, I actually have already prepared a great answer for that. So I, I really think that that people can't miss it. And wow. I mean, in, in the meantime, you can you can always visit my YouTube channel. I've I think you leave the link in the description. Yeah, I will leave the link in the description, the link for your YouTube channel and for your latest video, which is how to be happy, of course, Correct. in Portuguese. Right. Mm -hmm. And I do recommend Ricardo's videos. I have watched already one only because I did not want to be influenced for this interview as I spoke to Ricardo. Now I can watch the others. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not. Maybe only after the second interview. So yeah, I'm not perhaps, influenced perhaps. at all. <laughs> but I already knew that um, Ricardo's interview would be different. And it was sure. uh, not better, not worse, because everyone is absolutely unique. And exactly. this is really important. And we have been reinforcing that this each time and in each interview, everyone is unique. And so it's not because Ricardo is more special than anyone else who was on these interviews. It's just because this is an opportunity. So why not, why not exactly. take this opportunity? And uh, I do know that being into this new path of being a YouTuber um, that Ricardo has started, it, it makes sense to sort of have a different type of conversation next time. And sure. I'm really looking forward to it. And I was, so I didn't know if you could, so, well, if you couldn't, well, whatever, but I mean, it would, I'm so thankful that you can, Ricardo. I'm really, really happy. Thank you very I mean, much for accepting. I mean, I'm always available for great opportunities like this. So great. that's why I try to keep my time flexible so that I can always allow for these great surprises to happen. Right. So if that's an interesting way to finish our interview today, though, that okay. you, though you do plan ahead, you're also open to the unplanned. Yes. I mean, anyone that has tried to do a plan before 
and and then try to see if they actually stick to the plan you'll see you will, it absolutely doesn't work but <laughs> brilliant but generally the thing is your goal with the plan is not really to follow, follow the, plan the whole absolutely thing absolutely strictly yeah. it's just so that you have a very good sense a very good foundation of how your day should look like yeah and then i mean if anything comes up in the meantime then obviously you are going to have to adapt and actually prioritize yeah. so you have to sort of figure out what are the things that are most important to do in that day and uh -huh. that and just do the best that you can and be open to life. surprises exactly Yay! Brilliant! I'm really happy, Ricardo. Wow, <laughs> this is—it's um, only just beginning. <laughs> Indeed, I mean, I—I think great things await. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, always, definitely. I mean, if we allow. Exactly. As long as long as you, what I like to say is that as long as you are consistent, progress yes. is inevitable. There you are. I'm totally in sync with you. I tell that to people all the time because I really believe that if you are consistent, yeah. there's no way you can not achieve whatever you are setting out to. Definitely. We're already mm -hmm. giving a glimpse to our next next answer, Ooh. but we're not going to go into there now. <laughs> nah. We shall okay. wait until next week. Until next Sunday. So now everyone knows that next Sunday we are again with Ricardo Ferreira. And I'm very thankful and happy that Ricardo has accepted this um, unusual invitation, this surprise. And I look forward to being with everyone who is watching thank you for being there please share if you enjoy these interviews and don't forget to visit ricardo's youtube channel see you next week bye bye thank you thank you <laughs>